so after combining the first experiment and the second experiment, I am now able to rotate the player as well as move it around. And I'm only using the rigid body functions, the add force and add torque. I also have the moving cube in that scene for testing, which only uses, again, the rigid body, the add force. And because of that, the player and the moving cube are able to interact without additional code. Things like mass in the rigid body can make a big difference. If I increase the mass of the player and click play, okay, you'll see that the moving cube is barely moving the player, or not at all, okay, depending on the mass. If I return it back to one, okay, the, the cube is moving the player. Other variables like speed can also make a big difference because it's also part of how strong the force is. If I increase the speed for the box, you'll see more force coming from the box to the player. And we can still interact. I didn't have to do much if I look at the code. First, I renamed the character controller into player controller because Unity by default has a script called character controller. But even so, a lot of projects will have the same script name called player controller. So namespace kind of becomes important. But anyways, what's more important in this video is the fixed update. Rotating, I talked about this in my last video. I haven't changed anything there. So next line, get target walk direction. Here I'm getting the input from the keyboard, WASD, and depending on the key press, we get a vector, which is like getting an arrow on where you want to go. Right now, this vector is based on where the player is facing, but obviously if you want it to be based on the camera direction, you can do that, or pretty much anything depending on how you want your game to be. What's important is that this vector just sits there until back in the fixed update, we tell the player to walk. So if I look at the walk function, Again, nothing special here. We're just adding force based on the vector that we just created. And just like the first experiment, we're adding force with the force mode velocity change. And just like the second experiment, we're adding the exact opposite amount of force to cancel the momentum. So on the first update, we add force, but nothing happens with the cancel because there's no existing momentum. But on the second update, we cancel the momentum from the first update, and then it's the same thing over and over again. So that's all there is to it. And one more thing, in the angle calculator, we don't have to manually get the conversion rate. Unity already has a constant value, radian to degree, so I'll just use that. So I think things are pretty simple in this experiment. And the physics aspect is working rather nicely. In the next video, I might have slopes. And once you have slopes, things might get a little more complicated but I'll run more tests and see what I get from there. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.